with the program, which is in the MRT book, where it said that we have to stand in front of a bunch of inmates and the count and the director and give a verbal uh, testimony that is not my testimony. And it, it states in the very first sentence where I have to state that I've been disloyal, dishonest, and disrespectful to others and stuff like that. And then when I went to the director to talk to if there was a way we could get around that, because I'm not a drug dealer. I've, I've only done a drugs a few times in my life. I'm a very successful business owner and businessman. Well, we are about to see something that we have never seen before, and that is someone getting kicked out of the Steve Hoyle program for refusing to stand up and say that, well, like what he said. But before we jump in and watch his present day hearing, we are going to take a blast to the past. And you might remember this rock star. Anyways, with that, let's jump in. 2014, I wrote a song here at my home and I had a chance to put it on the radio. It made the most requested song ever on 107.5 radio station. And ever since then, it's like life's been trying to knock me down. And I'm just, and everything that I'm speaking on, you can go to my YouTube channel and see my whole dialogue of, and watch my videos of me doing welding work and, and my place and my property. And I even have a music video that I made myself that, that backs up all this. My mind keeps recreating a you alone. I'm tired of preaching I don't love you anymore. So you're accused of violating the conditions of your parole. The first is condition number four, and it reads, you fail to refrain from criminal, criminal activity. On August 15, 2023, you were arrested for possession of Schedule II methamphetamine. How do you plead to violating condition number four in that instance? Guilty. And then the second uh, number four reads, you failed to remain from criminal activity. On August 15th, you were arrested for possession of Schedule II methamphetamine. During the arrest, you admitted to using methamphetamine the night before. So how do you plead there? Guilty. Okay. So, Mr. Teals, um, why are we here then if you plead guilty to those violations? Oh. Uh. I'm just here to try to get the hole lifted off of my revocation. Uh, I've been here seven months and the state dropped the charges on December the 12th. They didn't proceed with anything. And I'm just here at the mercy of the parole board so that I can get out and try to try to continue with my life. I'm a musician. I have songs on the local radio stations here. I have a YouTube channel that I have several followers on. Uh, I was just, uh, where I live at, the last three years that I have done in jail before this time, I lost over three hundred something thousand dollars worth of stuff, which I have just pretty much left to be done with and move on with my life and trying to just I'm not a rebellious type person. I don't believe in retaliation. I just believe in being a good person and trying to go on with my life. Well, at the time this happened, I had a friend of mine show up that I had met while I was incarcerated, and he was a very good electrician while we were in jail working together because I'm a trustee. I work here as a trustee in Washtenaw Parish Correctional Center. And, uh, well, last time I was incarcerated, a lot of the thieves had stolen a lot of the wires and the cables from my shops and my barns. This man was going to help me. I didn't know that he had done relapsed and was using methamphetamine. And since he was there to help me, I partaked with the man so that it was going to hopefully keep us on the same wavelength. I was going to get some things done and we'd go on about our business. And it just happened that probation and parole, it came up the day of this happening. And uh, it is what it is. And I'm not denying that. You, you want to get on with your life. And I noticed when I looked at your um, 
the record. I do see the state dismissed the charges in, in December, uh, but you've had some positive drug screens while you've been on supervision. So you, you do you think you have a, a drug problem? No, ma'am. Uh, the deal with that drug screen is I know that I was clean the first time that I had a drug screen, but it the drug screen that they gave me, it failed for everything on the strip that day. I don't, I, I do not smoke weed. I do not take pills. Uh, I admit yeah. before that, that three weeks right. prior that I had used uh, a, a substance with, a, with another friend of mine, but I, I've never had a problem with any kind of narcotics or, or alcohol. I've always worked offshore. I've always been a person of uh, my statue and keeping my, morals and keeping my work ethic i've never let those type of things get a control of my life right i get that but you seem to me that regardless of what you say can't say no uh well i've been here seven months and this is a very good place to get sobriety so uh i would like to be able to prove to the parole board that this would not be an issue anymore if i'm granted a, a, a chance to reinstate myself into society. All right. Um, so let's see, you were, you have a full-term day, August of 2026, and you've been in jail since August? Yes, ma'am, since August the 15th of 2023, which is, I've been here five days into the seventh month. Why do you think we ought to uh, give you a pass? Uh, just on hope and belief and being a good hearted person and and, and uh, taking a chance. I'm asking for you guys to take a chance on me. I have a lot going on. Uh, I've missed several chances at 2014. I wrote a song here at my home and I had a chance to put it on the radio. It made the most requested song ever on 107.5 radio station. And ever since then, it's like life's been trying to knock me down. And I'm just, I've always been a fighter and I'm going to keep trying to fight to get to my, to my potential of what God wants me to be. You got to leave the drugs alone. Yes, ma'am. That is a fact. Deputy Marshawn, is there anything you can tell us about Mr. Fields? Do you know him? Oh, yes, ma'am. He's been coming here since I've been here. And I mean, I believe our maintenance crew, as soon as he clears the door, it requests us because he's one of our best workers of all time. Uh, but, yeah, he's never been a problem in the 10 plus years I've known him. So, so, Mr. Fields, why are you classified as a third felony offender? Because I've done something that I never should have done. And I took a plea agreement and I never should have done that. I've never taken plea agreements before in my life, but at the time this happened to me, I was running my own business. Uh, I had got involved with a young lady. I had been Solomon for over two and a half years. And then after I started getting publicity from what happened with my music, when I put it on the radio at that point in time in 2014, I got involved with a young lady that was a very beautiful person, but she, she was, I, I had never been around drugs and alcohol like this in my life because I've always worked off, off offshore. I worked offshore for over 15 years. And prior to that, I worked pipeline and I was always gone. Uh, I was born and raised on a 500 acre cattle ranch. I have very strong work ethic. I come from a very good family. Uh, well, when I got involved with this young lady and realized she was a bad apple, it was, uh, it was hard to get away from her. She was trying to trap me and, and take everything that I had. Uh, and everything that I'm speaking on, you can go to my YouTube channel and see my whole dialogue of, and watch my videos of me doing welding work and, and my place and my property. And I even have a music video that I made myself that, that backs up all this. Well, when that happened, this young lady was trying to rob me. I finally got away from her, but it was very hard to get away from her. And when I did, she got mad and retaliated and told and lied on me for seven different felonies. And I got arrested and due to a prior history and a bad divorce that I had had in 2010 from me and my ex-wife arguing and, and getting into some altercations, uh, it, it was uh, very hard to plead my case. 
Right. Please. So what what's what about the uh, aggravated assault with firearm? This young lady told the people that I put a nine millimeter to her head, pulled the trigger, and she ducked the bullet. I've never owned a nine millimeter in my life. Uh, when this okay. happened. All right. Um, let's move on. Uh, okay. All right, Mr. Have you ever? Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, have you ever did gotten any treatment inside DLC? Uh, no, sir. I've just always went to work. Uh, I'm I'm a certified welder, electrician, and plumber. So usually when I come here, I just go straight to work and work with these guys and just. That, that's the problem. You're not getting any help. You need help. You keep saying you're not a drug addict, but obviously you are. Point blank in the story. I mean, we never all want to admit it. But if you've used that many times, you're a drug addict. And you can't tell a friend, no, you're a drug addict. So uh, that's why I'm asking if you ever got any treatment. So you never got any long-term treatment in DOC? Uh, no, sir. No, I have never, never okay. been issued any. Be open to that. Sir? You'd be open to go and get some treatment. Sure, I have no problem with that, sir. <clears throat> All right, no further questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, Mr. Fields, I think we're prepared to vote. I think you answered the question that we were all seeking. Yes, um, now, I think I, I think you have not acknowledged that you have an issue. Um, you're more worried about going out and doing your music and whatever. But uh, I want to give you a break. My vote today would be, in lieu of revocation, send you to a DOC facility that has substance abuse treatment so that you can get some tools in your tool chest. To, to be successful when you get out of here. So, uh, and then, so you must complete that substance abuse treatment program. And then after release, I'm going to add the condition, you comply with any treatment plan that is recommended by that service provider. And you have a curfew, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Mr. Ledoux. Mr. Fields, I want you to be successful. Mm -hmm. You have a good background, you have good prospects, That's but right. to admit that you may have a problem with drugs, um, let's let's just get that taken care of so we don't see you again. I'm voting with my colleague in lieu of revocation. I want you to go to get some uh, DOC programming and substance abuse, and uh, so I don't see you as a fourth felony. Okay, Mr. Prince. Okay, Mr. Uh, Ledoux, I agree with them. Uh, go in there and learn what you can. Maybe while you're there, you'll realize that you do have a little problem. And I think if you take care of that problem, you're going to be successful. Drugs is your problem. <clears throat> okay? Whether you know it or not, you will know it after you go to our treatment center. So that's my hope. All right. So, Mr. Teals, we're going to get you some help and then uh, yeah. hope you can go out and be successful. Good luck to you, sir. Yes, ma'am. All right, uh, Deputy Marshawn, I think that, yes, concludes our business at Washita. Thanks for accommodating us this morning. Thank you. Well, that hearing took place not so long ago, March 20th, 2024. How does time fly? You know, I put on my cowboy hat in honor of this man. Can you see it? It's hard, but here it is. It, you know, what can I say? Anyways, we're going to jump into this hearing and I'll unpack it with the details at the end. So, Mr. Fields, you... Uh... Where we, you were not revoked by this panel, and you were given the special condition in lieu of revocation to attend the Steve Hoyle um, Intensive Substance Abuse Program to address one of the reasons that you were uh, arrested, and that was for meth. And um, this special condition, it says that, um, that you determined that you would not uh, participate in that program. Is that correct? Uh, no, ma'am. It's not that I did not want to participate in the program. I was doing all of my work, and I have all my work with me to prove that I was doing my work. I only had an issue with one issue with the program, which is in the MRT book, 
where it said that we have to stand in front of a bunch of inmates and the county and the director and give a verbal uh, testimony that is not my testimony. And it, it states in the very first sentence where I have to state that I've been disloyal, dishonest, and disrespectful to others and then stuff like that. And then when I went to the director to talk to if there was a way we could get around that, because I'm not a drug dealer. I've, I've only done a drugs a few times in my life. I'm a very successful business owner and businessman. And I, when I talked to them, they told me that if I didn't want to do the program, then I was going to have to get out. So I just signed out. I mean, I, I couldn't, can't argue with the people, but there was nothing done to help me. I have all my books here to prove that I was doing everything that they wanted me to do in the course. I just had an issue with one issue with it. And I've been here four months now. I've been down for 13 months. I was arrested August the 15th of 2023, December the 12th, 2023. The state dropped my charges. In March 20th, I came before you guys, and you guys offered the program. I said I didn't have a problem with the program, whatever y'all wanted me to do. I just needed to make this where I could get out. Uh, I didn't get here until May the 28th. I was shipped to Bayou Dorchette. I didn't start a class until July 16th of 2024. Uh, and August the 23rd is when I went to the counselor and talked to him about the issue that I had about this. I didn't want to stand in front of a bunch of inmates and tell some lies. And I was pretty much told by one of the teachers, well, just fake it till you get through it. And I didn't want to do that because I'm here for a, I'm here for a proper counseling. And then on January the 9th of last year, my 2015 Z71 pickup truck was stolen from my home. I got a call just Friday from Washita Parish up here saying that my $70,000 sports car was trying to be stole by someone at my home. I'm just asking for the parole board to please just lift a hold and put me back on supervision so I can go home and tend to my business and start my business back. That's all I need. So you're pleading not guilty to refusing to participate. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. That is correct. I, I did not, not refuse. Um, so at this time, uh, I'm going to ask the program director to have um, a say, and then we'll have Mr. Bob Ross going to start the questioning. Jason? Uh, sure. Uh, uh, MRT is a regular part of our program. It's something I had to take to be able to teach it. Uh, the step that we are requiring of every offender who comes to this program, both here and at Bossier, um, is um, is a step that everybody does. Um, I met with Mr. Fields personally to explain that it, because of his in lieu of replication situation, he had to meet all the criteria of all the classes that he takes. Um, he can't pick and choose which ones he would like to do. And uh, I made sure he was aware that if he did not want to do this, uh, that he was refusing to be in the program. And I would draw your attention to the fact that uh, he did sign a refusal form um, that should have been sent to the board. So that, that's all I have to say. Oh. Go ahead, Mr. Barra, and begin questioning. Mr. Fields, is there anything that he just said that you don't recognize? Or, I mean, do you do understand that when you go to a program like this, you don't, you don't get to pick and choose what sections you participate in. The pro board expects you to participate in all of them and successfully get a certificate to be released. That's what we expect of you and everybody else. And it so seems like you knew it, you just didn't want to do that particular section. It states here in the book that if you have an issue with this, then you can get with the counselor and have just an uh, uh, agreement with them and tell them your testimony. And you don't have to say it in front of a bunch of inmates or convicts or whatever. And it states in this book right here, page number 37, which is a confidentiality conflict in this book that says the general rule about confidentiality is summed up by this simple statement. What is said in this group should stay in this group. There are serious consequences for violating this rule, but we're in front of cameras that these people do not control that are audio and video and sitting in front of a bunch of inmates that I don't know what these people are going to take and turn around on me or whatever. But there is no other thing that is needed to be mentioned again. In this, if if there is any something you do not want others to know, do not put it in this book. 
books can be stolen and things can be manipulated. And there may be there may be a thief or two around you. And there are some people that do not want to change. It's not that I don't want to change. I just had an issue with the with the one thing. If I could have been if I could have gave my testimony to these two people in a, in a setting that's not being videoed or, or something else, then it'd been different. I'm sitting in I'm sitting in a class full of people. There's over 15 people that's done been left here and expelled and even shipped from this facility for doing drugs in this place. This place is full of drugs and, and, and marijuana and meth and mojo. I'm just ready to go home, people. I haven't had any charges in 13 months. I don't got nothing against these people and what they do is great and it may help some people, but I don't have this issue. I don't, I'm a very successful business person and I'm not trying to be disrespectful to you or anybody else. But I've lost over fifty something thousand dollars in thirteen months. Should I lose the rest of my livelihood over over something that could have been? He could have gotten with me and told me, "Okay, well, let's just sit down and you give us the testimony, and we can move you along through the program." But no, they didn't want to do that. And I'm not here to argue with with anybody, sir. I'm not here to argue with nobody. I just I just need I need to go home with whatever it takes. And if I have to revocate myself, which I do not, I don't know. I need to or not, but I know 13 months due to the time that I've had, I'm way, I'm way past being able to go. If I'd have revocated myself a long time ago, considering to doing the math, I would already be home already and I wouldn't have lost the things I lost. That's the real issue. That's the real issue is you don't want to be there. You think you need to be released immediately. That's what I read in the report that you feel like you would already be out on the street and that you do not want to continue the program because you think you're going to have an immediate release. No, ma'am, that's not do time computa uh, computation. Those people behind you do not do time computation. I understand that. Yes, ma'am, I know that. I'm not bucking nobody. Any questions? I have one more question for the consulate. Yes, sir. What he's quoting out of the book, is that an option for him to uh, have a private uh, session on that? No, sir. I'll, I'll point out that there was no part that he read that mentioned the private session. Uh, the book does say that if you don't want something, uh, if you don't want something, do not read while I'm speaking. All right. The, I, uh, the, the book does say if you don't want something to be stolen out of your book, do not write it in the book. It also does say that if you do not want people to know something specific, do not say it. We counsel everybody who comes to this program, don't mention your address, your girlfriend's address, her name, you know, various things like that, right? Um, we, we try to be very reasonable um, and, and um, we, we do not audio record anything here uh, as far as classes go. I want to make sure that's very clear. So. Hey, hey state, uh, Mr. Jason. Yes, sir. So you want to leave? Sir? Want to be released? It's up to the parole board, sir. I, I'm asking to be justifiably done on my time and my situation in all the circumstances i'm not denying anything i told miss jerry last time when she asked me if i'd get some help sure i would get some help i came here i've been here two and a half months but i i, I would i would like to be able to be put back under supervision so that i can prove to you guys that i'm not a problem i'm not a i'm not an issue that needs to be held in here when there's other people that can take up the vacancy that probably deserve to be in jail I understand, but there are rules and regulations that they that has to be followed. It's not rules and regulations that you determine. And uh, the staff there have rules and regulations. If you want to get out of there, you need to follow those rules and regulations. That's my suggestion to you. Um, Mr. So at this point, we have heard from both of you and we've asked questions. I think Mr. Barra, um, are you prepared to vote? Yeah, I'm prepared to vote, but one more question for you. Yes, sir. You want to finish the program and go that way, or do you want to be revoked and get your time that you serve in three years that way? How do you want to do it? I mean, I would go back to the class, but they're going to bump me back and make me sit here a couple of more months now. I mean, they're going to bump me further back on graduation when I was supposed to graduate December the 20th. But because, and it states in this book right here that if you don't pass this testimony, then you're supposed to be able to sit down with, with the counselors 
and do it. It's on page 48. It's right here in the book. What I just said, I didn't read it a while ago, but it's in the book. I'm not there. To just, I, I'm, the question wasn't tell me about the everything that's in the book. Do you want me to revoke you so you can get your credit for time served and figure out when you get out, or do you want to go back to the class? I'll go either way. Yes, sir. I, I, want, I want to be revoked so that hopefully my time right. can be calculated and I can get done what I need to get done. All right, no problem. Uh, may I vote to revoke the parole and rescind the previous order? Yes, sir. I concur. And my vote is also to revoke. Uh, Mr. Fields, your uh, special condition has been revoked and you will go back into uh, custody and uh, time computation will be taken care of. Okay. How long will this take, y'all? Let's get up on my ass. We do not do time computation. Yes, ma'am. That's fine. Thank y'all very much, and I'm sorry that I have wasted your time. Not a problem. So, so that concludes um, our hearing there at Bay George at 925. Thank you. Have a good day. So like I said, something we've never seen before. I mean, he he's really allowing his ego to get in the way of his freedom. He can stand up there in front of a bunch of strangers and say something that you don't think you, you know, he's saying, well, you know, I'm not those things. I'm not a drug dealer. I'm not a, but let's remember what he's locked up for. In 2015, he, he got arrested. His initial charges, it was a warrant for DV battery. DV battery two, DV battery second degree, another DV battery, and listen to this, cruelty to animals. So I don't know why he thinks he's so special. Uh, I'd much rather say that I'm a drug dealer than um, DV and, and being cruel to animals. But anyways, this is, uh, you know, when you think you've seen it all, this parole hearing. And, and, and look, well, while I was watching it, I was like, hey, man, you know, I, you don't want to say something that you're not. You don't want to lie. Maybe you can kind of hear what he's saying and you can feel for him or something. It's just a meth charge. That he, but that's what he got revoked on originally was the meth charges. Obviously, other things going on. And when it comes down to you getting out of prison, just bite the bullet, bite your pride. That's part of life. You got to do it sometimes. Um, but maybe you feel differently and that's okay. That's okay. We, we do not need to agree to agree. Actually, let's disagree. What am I saying? It's the cowboy hat. I can't even think straight. Don't worry. I'll put it back on for you. I know you're probably all still laughing at how ridiculous it looked. I don't disagree. But before we move to the next hearing, let's go back to our old rock stars, uh, some of his jams. Now that my hitch is up And I'm climbing in this pickup truck I struggle long They were long yeah, but I'm headed home And I'm hoping she's home What's up out there fans? Jails, a.k.a. Theo Billy Just want to kick a little shout out to uh, All my makes me push a little bit harder So please like the videos, share them See if you can get them out there Hopefully I'll see you guys soon on stage And we'll rock it out just remember, you know, you'll be seeing a guy with a big hat, 1970 models, this style, old school. That's the way I like to roll. Uh, there again, just get in touch with me via Facebook. There again, I can't get in touch with, you know, I can't return everybody's message, so please be patient. Uh, but it does help me. It does give me the drive to uh, keep going and make my fans happy because that's what I want to do. I'll second that. That's what he said. If you guys can give a like and a subscribe, help the channel reach 100,000 subscribers, it would be greatly appreciated. Now, we're going to jump into a little bit more of an intense hearing. So with that, let's go. Before we do, I do want to thank Sir Richard for pointing out uh, both hearings, connecting the dots in the spreadsheet. That's the only way that this is possible. So... Uh, so everyone say thank you to Richard in the comment section. Let him know that you appreciate making this all possible. And um, if you do want to see more hearings where we cover and uh, when when offenders come back for any given reason, there's a playlist for that. It's below. It's called The Return Of. So make sure to check out that playlist. Let's jump in. So, 
telling me that the grandmother didn't like the way you were taking care of the child? The wife, yes. Your wife was taking care of the child? Yes, child care, right? child care program, yes. The grandmother put the five-year-old oh. child up to going to the police and telling lies about you? No, she did that boy. It's well, four years the, old. She the inter the, the, the child is what I'm telling you at the child advocacy center, and she told him a story right. that was consistent with what the grandmother obviously, like you're saying, told her to say. I'm just I, <laughs> your story is just kind of a five-year-old stuff that's, up like that. Five-year-olds don't even know about it. That's the, only, that's the only way I can tell it. That's the only, that's the truth of it. Well, I told you it would be more serious. Now, before we watch this parole hearing, we are going to take another, maybe you guessed it, blast to the past. It is November 16th, 2021 parole hearing, and it is a Mr. No Way Roche classic. With that, let's jump in. Felony offender office and decent behavior with sending same day. June 19, 2018. Send a total of seven years and six months. Parole date is March 11, 2022. Good time, not eligible. Full term is December 11, 2025. Is this information correct? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Roche. Thank you, Ms. Teresa. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Mr. Mr. Shelton. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, Mr. Shelton, you're currently 65 years old. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. And you are a second felony offender. What was your first conviction? First conviction. I didn't have, have a first conviction. Okay. Uh, Possession of crack cocaine, maybe? No, sir. You pled guilty on February 7th, 207, to the offense of possession of crack cocaine in Wynn Parish. Is that not correct? Oh, that's correct, but uh, I don't know whether it's crack cocaine or not. That's what your rap sheet says. Yes, sir. And you, you were terminated on your supervision unsatisfactory on, on June 19th, 2018. Okay, let's go. So you're a second felony offender, am I correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And you were 60 years old at the time of this offense, right? Yes, sir. How old were you? How old was your victim? Uh, four, four. Yep, exactly right. She was four years old. An age where she didn't know what was happening. And you, you're a person of trust, so she didn't resist because she didn't know exactly what you were doing to her. Now tell me about the programs you've completed. I've done Living in Balance, uh, Reentry Pre-Release, and Cage Rage. Okay, so you never got to the the crux of your problem. Why did you refuse to enroll in sex well, offender I'm in, I'm in that one now, sir. I'm in that one now. Why did you refuse to enroll at the time they requested that you enroll in the first time? This is the first time I'm knowing about it. Well, uh, on, on your annual assessment, and let me get to that page. 
That's on page 27. It, question number 22. Sex offender treatment indicated, yes. Question 22A is checked off, refused treatment. And that was done in May of 2021. When did you enroll in sex offender treatment? September, the last week of September. 21. So basically, five months after you refused to enroll, you decided it would be best to enroll. I wasn't told about it back in May. Okay, well, the information is wrong because it specifically says that you refused to enroll. So basically, you found out that you were up for a parole hearing in September, so you decided you think you might want to enroll. Pretty much the way it happened? No, sir. That's when I brought the uh, papers to sign. Okay. okay. Last week of September. Okay. Great. Now, I want to inform you, uh, Mr. Skelton, that you have a poor supervision history. You've been revoked on occasions and then you finished unsatisfactorily. Uh, the victim's family is adamantly opposed to your release. The DA office has submitted a statement saying that he is opposed and the judge strongly opposes. And if I'm going to vote for you, Mr. Skelton, you must complete your sex offender treatment. Okay, I'm working on it. In most cases, you're in phase one right now. Am I correct? Now we start in phase two. So you're in phase, phase two last phase. week. So you have uh, phase two to complete, phase three, and phase four. So, That's correct. So you need to complete all four phases of the sex offender treatment, take some additional programming, because uh, you need some other programming, and write back when you complete that program, because I need you to complete that program if I'm going to vote for you to be released. Yes, sir. So, especially because the victim was four years old and you were a grown man of 60 years old at the time this occurred. I understand. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Russia. Any other, no other questions? Is there anything, uh, Warden, is there anything you'd like to say on behalf of uh, Mr. Shelton? Uh, not really. He's like I said. He's been disciplinary wise, been good here. Uh, during my interview with him, you know, prior to the hearing, I mean, this lack of, I don't know, emotion with this kind of concerns me. I will make that statement. It does concern me on that issue, but. Uh, as far as within the facility, he has been staying out of trouble. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, is the panel ready to vote? Uh, Mr. Uh, sorry, Mr. Uh, Shelton, is there anything you'd like to say before the panel votes? Uh, Your Honor, I just want to uh, be uh, paroled and do my uh, appeal with my uh, hearing that I'm on with the federal court. Okay. That's why I want to proceed in. All right. 
Thank you, Mr. Shelton. Thank you, Mr. sir. Roche, are you ready to vote? Yes, I am, Mr. Mayor Bella. Okay. Uh, Mr. Skelton, based upon very strong law enforcement opposition, opposition from the DA's office, the victim's family is adequately opposed in the light of rehabilitative programming, no sex offender treatment, my vote is to deny your request. Thank you, Mr. Roche. Ms. Wise? <clears throat> uh, Mr. Shelton, uh, my vote is the same for the same reasons. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that you're in class. Please sit on the front row and really get some insight you know, as to uh, your offense and how it impacts your victim and your community. Best wishes to you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Shelton, uh, you have two votes to deny your parole. I'm gonna deny your parole for the same reasons as outlined by uh, my colleagues. I'm gonna encourage you to continue to work hard and perhaps next time uh, you may be in a different position, but for today's vote, your vote has been denied. So good luck to you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, that's it. Man, I just love Mr. No Way Roche. I love the way that he goes in there and the way that he says it. And oh, do I miss him. But what do you think? Do you think he took their advice? I mean, we kind of already got a sneak peek to that question. Did he learn anything from sex offender programs? Or is he still insisting on his innocence? Do you think he's innocent? Remember, he only got sentenced to seven and a half years. A four-year-old. Well... Let's see how this hearing plays out. This is a rehear. You had a parole eligibility date of 3-11-2022. You're not eligible for good time. And you have a full-time date of 12-11-2025. You're serving a, six, a seven and a half year sentence for indecent behavior with a juvenile. Um, does that sound correct to you? Yes, yes ma'am, that's correct. That's correct, okay. Um, Warden, do you have any comments about the offender? Yes, ma'am. He had, uh, I think, one DB write-up since he's been here, and that was back in 2018. Uh, he's completed uh, several programs. Uh, he's also a Pride member. And I think his record speaks for itself. All right. Um, Mr. Shelton, why don't you tell me why you're here in front of us today, what you've done, and um, help us understand why we should give you early release. Well, uh, <clears throat> I'm here today to uh, see about being paroled early. Uh, my charge is uh fate is was made uh on a let's see how I'm gonna say it <laughs> what was claim at the time uh I was given this charge I was in the Wynn Parish Medical uh, Hospital and ICU unit. And the date and the time do not match with the charge I was given. So your medication impaired your decision to make a decision? No, ma'am. So you were taking medicine when you were charged. Did you go to trial? How were you uh, found guilty? Did you plead guilty or? I went on a uh, Alfred plea that the jury gave me. There was no uh, trial, no jury, none of that. Judge made the decision. Yes, ma'am. Okay. But you pled guilty to it. To an alpha plea, yes, ma'am. Um, what 
Mr. Barra, do you have some questions for this offender? No, just uh, looking at the at the record, you know, the, the the story that the girl told seemed to be consistent. It says this information remained consistent with the details provided during the interview conducted with the victim at the Rapides Child Advisory Center on April 20, 2016. So you're saying it's made up. This five year, you think this five-year-old child had something against you? Can you tell me a little bit about why you think she was real and coached by our grandmother, uh, sir? She was coached by our grandmother. And, and what did her grandmother have against you? <laughs> that uh, I guess my wife wasn't uh, caring for her the same way. She, well, the way she wanted uh, the child to be cared for. This is not the first time uh, she's been rejected by people of child care. There's two more uh, people that wouldn't keep the child. Period. This is the grandmother, not the not the mother. Mother, mother probably don't even know nothing about this. Would you? So, <clears throat> telling me that the grandmother didn't like the way you were taking care of the child? My wife, yes. Your wife was taking care of the child? Yes, child care, right. child care program, yes. The grandmother put the five-year-old oh. child up to the going to the police and telling lies about you. No, she did that boy. It's well, child, four the, years old. The, inter, the, the, the child is what I'm telling you at the Child Advocacy Center, and she told him a story right. that was consistent with what the grandmother, obviously, like you're saying, told her to say. I'm just... I, <laughs> your story is just kind of... A five-year-old stuff that's, up like that. Five-year-olds don't even that's, know about it. That's the only way I can tell it. That's the only. That's the truth of it. Well, that's why I'm asking you because I'm trying to get the understand it. At five years old, you really don't even know about all them details yet. Right. That was the only question I had. Mr. Chillis. I don't have any questions. So um, I want to know how, what was the, the most important thing you've learned since you've been down, um, since you've been in classes? What, what's the best information that you've uh, uh, I've learned uh, several things, but I'm a parent myself. <laughs> I raised my two uh, kids, me and my first wife. From the time they were born up to they left home uh, out of high school. But when you you've been incarcerated, you've taken several classes. What was the best class that you took? Hmm, living in balance. Okay. What did you learn in the um, living in balance that that was good? A little more different, uh, well, ways of living that, well, we we already live. Uh, but we just don't have uh, violence or none of that in the home, no way. But living in balance is a good class to have. Hi. Um, is the board prepared to vote? Yes. Yes. And uh, so, Mr. Barra? Yes. Well, uh, today I'm going to have to vote to deny parole due to the strong law enforcement opposition. Everybody in law enforcement is opposed to this one. The mother of the victim is still strongly opposed to this one. The seriousness of the crime committed on a five-year-old victim has put some doubts in my mind and 
the fact that you're scheduled to get out of jail next year, no matter what, anyway. So uh, take that extra year and try to learn a little bit more about how to be a better person like that. Thank you. Mr. Tillman. Okay, so I'm going to I also, and I concur with uh, Mr. Boris. My vote is to deny, um, sir, I, I, um, you'll be getting out, you'll have some registration issues, but uh, please do your best so that you don't um, have to come see us again. Once you go ahead and get out and lead a good life, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you so much. You've been denied. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, We're signing off at the correctional the time. It's now 1224. Thank you so much, staff there. He popped real quick out of that wheeler, you know, and that's uh, that's the sad truth. He can still he can still offend again. I'll tell you what stuck out to me about this hearing. Maybe it did to you as well. But it was where is our favorite warden? He's there at the last hearing. Our favorite warden has no poker face when he hears that 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 the victim was four years old. His eyes and he's and he even has the comment the comment to say at the end there it's like you know I'm I'm shocked by how little he seems to care about this crime. I don't recognize this new warden. It's been a while. I hope he's still there. I did check with Richard. Richard said it didn't show on their website that he was no longer there. But you know could be that they I don't know I guess time will tell but with this hearing the appeal doesn't state any facts of the crime what it does state is what he was telling them in the hearing which is I was at the medical I was at the hospital at the time of this accusation and that's pretty much all it says Shelton argues that his trial counsel is ineffective for failure to investigate the bill of information of his lack of criminal history which is stupid because they all have a lack of criminal history almost always um and that he contends that that the bill of information accused him of committing the crime on march 21st 2016 when evidence shows that he was in the medical center from march 20th through march 23rd and that's what he stated here at his parole hearing and miss ledeau wasn't sure exactly what he said he's like well you're blaming it on medication and come on we all know it's bs if it if he was specifically accused on a certain date that he had the perfect alibi for he would have simply have pled not guilty and used that perfect alibi some people they um just don't want to admit it they'll rather i mean in this case hey it's just one more year in prison he, he knew the calculations he made a calculated he's like you know what i'm just gonna say i'm innocent i'd rather do that um or maybe he's just in denial who knows but i don't believe he's innocent for a second earlier today we had another hearing where a man came up and insisted on his innocence from doing the most horrible crime i'm gonna show that hearing uh, probably tomorrow to y'all. I um, it was uh, it was pretty intense, but but um, and hey, you don't want to show up to a parole hearing and insist on your innocence uh, because you won't get paroled, and maybe that can make you think twice about something. We do have a playlist that says um, uh, that says on it uh, wrongfully convicted question mark. So if you want to see hearings like that make sure to check out that playlist there are a few compelling hearings in that playlist that that can make you wonder um and certainly the prisons are full of a certain small percentage of people that are innocent but this in my opinion no chance you don't admit guilt you don't take an alfred plea for something especially when your excuse is that you have the perfect alibi that you somehow did not use so no i don't believe it for a second Oh, kind of, you know, it's interesting. He had all this time, didn't learn. Oh, gee, just wanted to do his time. What can you say? Um, <laughs> so that's it. We covered two uh, return of hearings. Make sure to check out that playlist. Again, tell Richard, thank you in the comment section, because think about it. We have, we have spreadsheets. Some of you have seen it. I've shared it in the members only channel. There are spreadsheets that connect the dots for all of these hearings otherwise it would be impossible so when someone comes up for revocation it's in the spreadsheet and it says man do check it out he had a parole hearing four years ago here's the row here's the spreadsheet here's the research I click in put it together for y'all and it's incredible that's why it's possible to do this so please let him know in the comment section a thank you
And with that, I'll let you go. Jails, a.k.a. Theo Billy. Just want to kick a little shout out to uh, all my lead. Makes me push a little bit harder. So please like the videos, share them, see if you can get them out there. Hopefully I'll see you guys soon on stage and we'll rock it out. Just remember, you know, you'll be seeing a guy with a big hat, 1970 models, this style, old school. That's the way I like to roll. Uh, there again, just get in touch with me via Facebook. There again, I can't get in touch with, you know, I can't return everybody's message, so please be patient. Uh, but it does help me. It does give me the drive to uh, keep going and make my fans happy because that's what I want to do. <laughs>